Hello Immortal News family and welcome back to our channel. In the last 24 hours we have received the somber news of the passing of extraordinary talents and today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Before we start, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Number 9. A tragic event has unfolded as a young beauty queen, known for her vibrant spirit and dedication to social causes, has passed away at the tender age of 24. The cause of her untimely demise was complications arising from a maxillofacial surgery. This was not a cosmetic procedure, but a necessary intervention to address a non-cosmetic issue involving her jaw and lip. She was undergoing treatment at a hospital in Venezuela, where she initially seemed to be recovering from the surgery to remove a lump on her lip and treat jaw abrasion. However, fate took a cruel turn when she suffered a fatal cardiac arrest. This remarkable young woman was not just a beauty queen, she was a beacon of hope and a symbol of service. She was a runner-up in the 2021 Miss Venezuela in the World pageant, a prestigious event held in Buenos Aires for Venezuelan migrants. But her beauty was more than skin deep. She pursued a degree in social communication at the Inter-American Open University in Buenos Aires and used her skills as a presenter for Argentine news channels, A24 and America Tucumán. Her return to Venezuela in 2023 was marked by her crowning as the Queen of Sport of La Guaira, her beloved hometown. There, she continued to volunteer with the Simón La Guaira Foundation, further cementing her legacy as a person dedicated to making a positive impact in her community. The sudden loss of this young woman is a profound tragedy, deeply felt by her family, friends, and all who were inspired by her life and humanitarian efforts. Her name was Wilevis Brito, a name that will be remembered not just for her external beauty and titles, but for her kind nature and the everlasting mark she left on the world. Tributes to Wilevis Brito. Number 8. O.J. Simpson, the celebrated football icon and Heisman Trophy winner, passed away at the age of 76 after a courageous battle with cancer. His transformation from a football player to a revered personality in the entertainment industry left an enduring impression on both the sports and Hollywood communities. He is remembered for his record-breaking stint with the Buffalo Bills and his charisma in the film industry, which gave delight to numerous fans across the world. His athletic brilliance at USC and professional achievements in the NFL laid the groundwork for a post-athletic career that featured famous film roles and successful ventures into broadcasting. Beyond the spotlight, he was a dedicated parent and engaging personality whose off-field life piqued the public's interest. His contributions to the worlds of athletics and entertainment were numerous, leaving a legacy of exceptional talent and unforgettable memories. Despite the difficulties he had, his name is synonymous with football excellence and a strong appearance on TV. As the news of his death spreads, we remember the significant impact he had on his fans and the communities he impacted. Tributes to O.J. Simpson Number 7. Taro Akabono, the trailblazing sumo wrestler who was the sport's first foreign-born grand champion, passed away due to heart failure at the age of 54 in a Tokyo hospital. Born Chad Rowan in Hawaii in 1969, Akabono moved to Japan in 1988, embarking on a storied career that saw him ascend to the pinnacle of sumo wrestling as the 64th Yokozuna in 1993, a title never before bestowed upon a non-Japanese athlete. Standing at 2.03 meters and weighing 210 kilograms, Akabono was revered for his formidable presence and innovative fighting style, often dominating his opponents with powerful thrusts. 
His achievements and respectful approach to sumo won over fans worldwide, making him a beloved figure in the sport. Akabono's rivalry with Takano Hanakoji and Masaru Hanada revitalized sumo during a period of waning interest, injecting excitement and international appeal. Akabono's impact extended beyond the dohyo. He was a symbol of cultural exchange, fostering bonds between Japan and the U.S. Upon retiring in 2001, after a distinguished career adorned with 11 championship titles, his departure ceremony was a testament to his influence, attended by thousands and celebrated by peers and admirers alike. Survived by his wife Christine and their three children, Akabono's legacy as a pioneering spirit, an ambassador of goodwill, and a dedicated athlete endures. His life and career have left an everlasting mark on the world of sumo and the hearts of those who knew him. Tributes to Taro Akabono Number 6. Trina Robbins, a trailblazing figure in the world of comics, passed away due to a stroke on April 10th in San Francisco, California, at the age of 85. Robbins, an early participant in the underground comics movement, carved out a space for female artists in a predominantly male industry and earned her place in the Will Eisner Hall of Fame for her contributions. Her journey began in the vibrant science fiction fandom of the 1950s and 1960s, leading to her pioneering work in underground comics. Robbins's designs and stories graced the pages of the East Village Other and the underground comic gothic blimp works, including her historic design of the costume for the character Vampirella. Relocating to San Francisco in 1970, Robbins co-produced the first all-woman comic book, It Ain't Me, Babe Comics, and was a driving force behind women's comics, advocating for female voices in the industry. Robin's creativity wasn't limited to underground comics. She adapted classical works, contributed to children's comics, and critiqued the portrayal of women in mainstream comics. Her passion for promoting women in comics extended beyond her artwork, as she authored non-fiction books detailing the history of women in cartooning and co-founded Friends of Lulu. Survived by her partner Steve Lealoha and a legacy of groundbreaking work, Robbins was not just a comic artist, but a beacon for change in the comic book industry. Her dedication to feminism and representation paved the way for future generations, making her a beloved icon whose influence will be felt for years to come. Tributes to Trina Robbins Number 5. Once a dedicated mayor and an advocate for education and environmental conservation, Ted Wilson left a lasting impact on Salt Lake City and beyond before passing away at the age of 84 due to complications from heart failure and Parkinson's disease. During his time as Salt Lake City's 30th mayor, he oversaw considerable urban expansion and spearheaded historic and environmental preservation measures that irrevocably altered the city's landscape. His passions stretched beyond politics to climbing and education, where he inspired many people with his expeditions and community involvement. Following his mayoral duties, he made important contributions to academia as director of the Hinckley Institute of Politics and professor emeritus at the University of Utah. His efforts to promote understanding and relief for Tibetan refugees exemplified his caring nature and global perspective. His exploits took him to high peaks all over the world, but it was his work at home that carried him to new heights in the hearts of those who knew him. His legacy is remembered by family, friends, students, and the community he so faithfully served. His contributions to the city, passion for the environment, and commitment to education all serve as testaments to a life well-lived. Tributes to Ted Wilson
Number 4. Junior Pope, a dynamic Nigerian actor and esteemed film producer, passed away at the age of 39. Born in Bamenda, Cameroon, on May 7, 1984, to Luke and an Igbo mother, Pope moved to Nigeria for his education before dazzling the world with his cinematic talents. Initially aspiring to be an accountant, he found his true calling in acting, embarking on a prolific career in 2006 that would span nearly two decades. Pope's breakout role came in the 2007 film Secret Adventure, directed by Chidi Chikere, marking the beginning of an illustrious journey in Nollywood. He became a household name, contributing to over 100 films, including notable titles such as Throne of Tears, Always Mine, and Blood Affair. His roles in G-Beggy and Honey Money were among his last, showcasing the depth and versatility that endeared him to fans and colleagues alike. Off-screen, Pope was a devoted family man, marrying Jennifer Awele Okpuno in 2014 after a serendipitous meeting on Facebook, and together they raised three children. His off-screen and on-screen chemistry was a testament to his ability to connect with both his audience and peers. Pope's legacy as a stalwart of Nollywood, his unparalleled dedication to his craft, and his role as a loving husband and father will forever be remembered. Tributes to Junior Pope Number 3. Eckhart Dux, a distinguished German actor and voice artist whose career spanned over seven decades, passed away at the age of 97 in Sassenberg, Germany. Born on December 19, 1926, in Berlin, Dux was the son of an insurance executive. His journey into the arts began under the tutelage of Elsa Bongers in Berlin, leading to his stage debut in 1948 at the city's Renaissance Theater. Dux's versatile acting career saw him grace stages in Munich, Hamburg, Frankfurt, and Stuttgart, alongside notable appearances in film and television. Dux's voice became synonymous with many Hollywood legends as he lent his talent to dub films into German. In the 1950s and 1960s, he was particularly known as the German voice of Audie Murphy. His remarkable ability to adapt his voice allowed him to dub for actors such as Anthony Perkins in Psycho, Steve Martin, Fred Astaire, George Peppard in The A-Team, Jerry Stiller, and Ian McKellen as Gandalf following Joachim Hopner's passing in 2006. His contributions to Terry Pratchett's The Color of Magic as the voice of Rincewind, portrayed by David Jason, further showcased his exceptional talent. Beyond the screen, Dux's voice was a familiar presence on radio, both as an actor and narrator, endearing him to listeners with his captivating storytelling. His personal life saw him married first to actress Gisela Peltzer, and later to editor Marlies Dux. Dux's legacy as a cornerstone of German dubbing and acting will be remembered for generations to come, leaving behind a rich tapestry of work that transcends the spoken word. Tributes to Eckhart Dux Number 2. Martin Chambers, the bishop-elect of Dunkeld and a devoted servant of the Catholic Church, passed away on April 9th, just before his scheduled Episcopal ordination on April 27th. He was 59 years old. Born in Scotland, Chambers dedicated his life to spiritual leadership and the nurturing of faith communities. After studying philosophy and Catholic theology at the prestigious Pontifical University of Salamanca and training for the priesthood at the Royal Scots College, he was ordained a deacon and later a priest, marking the beginning of a life committed to service. Chambers' ministry was characterized by his deep commitment to parish work, Catholic education, and vocation pastoral care. He served in various capacities across Scotland, notably as the parish priest of St. Thomas the Apostle in Moorkirk and St. Matthew's in Kilmarnock, demonstrating a profound dedication to community and spiritual growth. His missionary work in Ecuador with the Society of St. James the Apostle further exemplified his zeal for spreading faith and compassion internationally. 
Pope Francis's appointment of Chambers as Bishop of Dunkeld was a testament to his lifelong dedication to the Church. His untimely death has left a void in the hearts of those he served and mentored. Chambers' legacy will be remembered as that of a humble shepherd who walked with his flock, guiding them with love, wisdom, and unwavering faith. Tributes to Martin Chambers Today's top headlines. News 1. In a significant development that rekindles hope for clarity and justice, the Metropolitan Police has announced a reinvestigation into the circumstances leading to the charge against beloved TV presenter Caroline Flack, following potential new witness evidence. The initial decision by the Crown Prosecution Service to caution Flack was overturned by Met Police, leading to her being charged with assault a decision that has been mired in controversy and sorrow following Flack's tragic passing in February 2020. Caroline's mother, Christine Flack, fervently expressed the family's determination to uncover the truth, hinting at discrepancies in the handling of Caroline's case on the night of her arrest. As the police delve back into the investigation, prompted by the family's persistent quest for answers and the possibility of new evidence, the spotlight returns to the events that led to a distressing chapter in the world of entertainment and beyond. This development underscores the enduring impact of Caroline Flack's legacy, as her family and a community of supporters seek closure and justice amidst their loss. News 2. Golf legend Jack Nicholas, renowned for his mastery on the green, recalls a nerve-wracking moment from the 1964 Masters that could have dramatically changed the course of golf history. In a candid revelation, Nicholas shared how a mishit eight-iron tee shot on Augusta National's iconic 12th hole almost resulted in a disastrous mishap involving the Masters co-founders, Bob Jones and Clifford Roberts, narrowly avoiding a potential catastrophe by mere inches. This harrowing incident, where Nicholas' errant shot flew just over the heads of Jones and Roberts, who were observing from a short distance, is not the only memorable moment that Nicholas humorously reminisced about. During an annual presser with fellow golf legends Gary Player and Tom Watson, Nicholas recounted an amusingly awkward birthday call from Bing Crosby, showcasing the lighter side of the pressures faced by golf's greatest icons. News 3. The Colorado skiing community is in mourning following the tragic death of 21-year-old skier Dallas LeBeau, who died attempting a high-risk stunt over a major highway. LeBeau, known for his vibrant spirit and passion for skiing, tragically failed to clear the width of Highway 40 near Berthoud Pass Summit, landing on the pavement, despite wearing a helmet and protective gear. The Grand County Sheriff's Office confirmed the incident, noting the young skier was pronounced deceased at the scene by first responders. Friends and family remember LeBeau as a joyful and kind individual who had loved skiing since he was two years old. A GoFundMe has been established to support his grieving mother, capturing the heartbreak of a community shaken by this loss. The Winter Park and Fraser Chamber expressed deep sorrow and encouraged those struggling with grief to seek support, underscoring the impact of LeBeau's death on the local and skiing communities alike. News 4. A tragic incident occurred involving 24-year-old student Ellen Mercer, whose long-term misuse of laughing gas significantly contributed to her untimely death, as determined by an inquest. Mercer, who used up to three large bottles of laughing gas daily, sought emergency care due to mobility issues, but was found unresponsive the following day. The coroner emphasized the dangers of laughing gas misuse, linking it to serious health risks. The case sheds light on the need for awareness and support for individuals facing substance misuse challenges. Number one, Eric Sievers, a distinguished former professional football player, renowned for his tenure as a tight end in the National Football League, passed away on April 10th at the age of 66. Born on November 9th, 1957, 
receiver's formidable presence on the field was first heralded during his high school years at Washington Lee High School in Arlington, Virginia, where he achieved 1975 Parade All-American and Scholastic All-American honors. Seaver's impressive skills at the University of Maryland led to his selection by the San Diego Chargers in the fourth round of the 1981 NFL Draft. His rookie year was marked by his inclusion on the NFL All-Rookie Team, setting the stage for a decade-long career in the league. Seavers's NFL journey saw him don the uniforms of the Chargers, the Los Angeles Rams, and the New England Patriots, showcasing his prowess across 10 seasons from 1981 to 1990. In recognition of his significant contributions to the sport, Seavers was inducted into the Virginia High School Hall of Fame in 1997. His legacy extends beyond his professional achievements, remembered for his character and the passion he brought to the game. Eric Seaver's departure is a profound loss to the sports community and his family, to whom he was a source of inspiration and pride. His life and career continue to inspire young athletes, and his memory will be honored by those who admired his dedication to football. Tributes to Eric Seavers